Praise the Lord. Thank you, Gideon's International, for organizing this and for giving me this wonderful opportunity to share about his story in my life. May he increase and I decrease. Well, my name is Uma, and God has given me a new name, Esther. And it's not the same testimony that I'm going to share with you, which I did in Modesto in 2019. But God has multiplied his testimonies in my family. And it's going to be an addition today, a new addition, which you will definitely relish and enjoy what God has done and glorify his name. So I hail from Chennai, India, and I was born and brought up in a very orthodox Hindu Brahmin family. And I was the last daughter among the four daughters in my family. And when I was a Hindu, I was such a staunch Hindu Brahmin that every day I used to go to the temples and worship those idols. I used to do a lot of ritualistic things and I used to sacrifice and do a lot of physical sacrifices to those idols. And you can never see my forehead without the vermilion saffron which the Hindus keep. And it was so pious I felt. I felt that I was from a very upper caste and I was so proud. But I never had the peace in my heart. I was searching for holiness to the holy God but I never found that. And the best part of it is when we were in India we had the opportunity to go to Christian convent schools. And that's where the door opened. It's not because the Christian convent but how God met me there. So when I was studying in that convent school, I was surrounded with a lot of Christian friends. And every day we used to have the school assembly and we used to know the Lord's prayer by heart. And we used to hear the word of God and everything over there, but nothing actually influenced me or changed me. Because when my sister was in 10th grade, I was in first grade in the same school and nothing changed any one of us over there. But I want to stress this more because these days, you know, they say that Christians convert others. That's not true because I'm a living proof because no man can convert another man. Conversion is not a compulsion. It is a conviction of the heart. And when I was a small child, you know, the Gideons used to come to our Christian convent school and they used to distribute these small, tiny, pocket-sized Bibles to all the children. At that time I was in first grade, I suppose it was 1985 when I first received this small tiny Gideon Bible and I was so fascinated with this small Bible because it was so tiny that it would fit into my small hands and I always used to keep it in my uh, uniform pocket, pocket and I used to keep running around with it. And uh, just because I like literature a lot, I just simply started reading the Psalms and the Proverbs not knowing the exact meaning of it, but I simply used to read it. And days went on, and the school organized for a scripture union camp. At that time, I was 12th grade, and I just went to the camp to have fun with my friends. First two days of the camp, I was just having fun. The third day in the camp, what happened was, a sister shared a small message in the group, and she sh shared from Isaiah chapter 44 that we cut wood from a tree and one part of the wood we make an idol and we worship it and the other part of the wood we are actually using it as firewood for cooking. So we are actually worshipping the created object and not the creator. So if you have brains, think and see. She just pointed out to me in front of the whole crowd not knowing that I was a Hindu, and she said, if you have brains, think and see. So that night was a sleepless night, because as a teenager, I felt so bad in front of all my friends, and I couldn't sleep, and out of curiosity, just to go and fight with that sister the next day, I opened the Bible, and for the first time, I started reading the book of Isaiah from the Old Testament, out of curiosity to just fight. But as I was reading, you know what happened? I don't know what happened, but the Holy Spirit just transformed me. And for the first time in my life, I got to know that the true living God hates idol worship. 
I cannot compress this omnipresent God and make him into a statue or an object and worship him and say that you are God. I can't worship what I make from my hand. And I got to know the most important second thing was that this God of the Bible wants to have a personal relationship with me. When I was a Hindu, I used to worship a thousand gods. It is said that in Hinduism, there are 33 crows of gods, and I used to worship so many gods for each and everything. But none of those gods wanted to have a personal relationship with me in my life. But the God of the Bible wanted me to have a personal relationship with him. And I can call this God Abba Father, my dad, my own father. I can share with him anything as I am. And the third most important thing that I got to know is that this God of the Bible does not require any sacrifices. Because when I was a Hindu, I used to do a lot of ritualistic sacrifices. I used to dip myself into Ganges. I need not do that anything. I need not go climb the Himalayas. I need not go to the river Ganges and dip for holiness to wash away and cleanse my sins. But this God sacrificed himself on the cross of Calvary while I was still a sinner. So this changed my life. I can just go to him as I am. He does not expect my physical uncleanliness. He expects only my heart, a broken heart. That's what this God wants. So that day, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior when I was in 12th grade. Praise God.